If you've got an area like this that's covered in it, it's not a lost cause. This is kudzu. Zero plant diversity where there's kudzu. Hey everyone, I'm here with invasive species expert, Dr. David Coyle, and he's going to show us how to manage and potentially get rid of kudzu. Kudzu is not invincible. While kudzu is normally looked at as a herbaceous thing, right? It's got, everything's green. You can kind of snap these off pretty easy. It's actually semi-woody. So as you get way down in here and you dig down a little bit, it gets woody. Like this is the woody thing coming in here. Everywhere that a node touches the ground, it makes a root. This was just a node that hit the ground. Now that thing is rooted as well. Here's your main one right here, big and woody. There's a big tuber underneath there. And this spot right here, is a node that rooted just because it came in contact with the ground. You know, one of the detriments of kudzu is that it creates this blanket over the earth and it's, it snuffs out everything underneath it. So this is one of the main reasons people would want to get rid of kudzu. This right here is the site of the time lapse. Thing, you will not be able to walk through this. You don't think so? It's the very, very beginning of spring and there's no kudzu to be found, but I know it's here because I saw it last year. So I'm gonna try to document as well as I can how quickly kudzu grows. Take a look at this shopping cart. It looks like it's been here for a year or so. Like I'm guessing that's probably last year's growth of kudzu, um, but we'll see what happens to it this year. I'm gonna show where the shopping cart is. Yeah, we had to dig it out, <laughs> but it's right. It's right, right in there. Check Here's this out. <laughs> it was totally buried. You know, it starts from nothing, right? You have, you've got dead vines, and then the rate at which this plant grows over those dead vines, and just the sheer rate of growth is amazing, and then the fact that it uses its dead former bodies as a, as a trellis to grow up and over stuff mm -hmm. uh, is really just striking, especially in seeing it this way. You can see how it's so hard to get in once there's a mat, it is so tough to get through that mat because it's not just this year's growth, it's however many past years of growth are still there. Yeah. Let me give you a little background on kudzu. It was first brought to the US in 1876 at the Centennial Exposition of Philadelphia. This was a big event where all different countries came and they set up a booth and they showed people things from their native land. Well, Japan came over and had this beautiful twining vine. You can see this thing twines all over the place. It had this twining vine called kudzu, and they showed people, they marketed this as something to grow on porches, as a, as a decorative ornamental. At that point, it began getting sold in the United States, especially the southeastern U.S. It was later promoted by the U.S. government as a way to control soil erosion. You can see it completely takes over areas. It has a big thick mat of vines and that can hold down soil and even trap soil and fill in some of the cracks. After it was widely planted, it sort of got out of control. People stopped taking care of it. And now we are where we are today, where you see it all over these areas that are, you know, sort of in between controlled and not controlled, roadsides, climbing up trees, railways. This is the issue with kudzu. If you've got an area like this that's covered in it, it's not a lost cause. There are things you can do to manage or even get rid of kudzu. There are herbicides that you can use. There are different biocontrol agents you can use. There are mechanical methods that can reduce or eliminate kudzu. So let's get into it. So what do we do first? Safety equipment. And that means boots, long pants, long sleeve shirt, gloves to protect your hands and skin, eyewear to protect your eyes, and a hat to protect your head. Any foliar herbicide is gonna, is gonna be applied to the foliage, as you might guess, and the trick and the key is to get good coverage on that foliage. You want the foliage to be wet just to the point of dripping, but you don't wanna waste a lot of chemical. You also don't wanna spray above your head, so get about head height and then stop. You wanna try to get as great a coverage as you can, and you wanna back through it. You don't wanna spray and then walk through what you just sprayed. You wanna spray and back up as you're going the whole time. This is gonna get pretty good coverage all the way through. Now, one of the things about kudzu, because these leaves are so big, they act as umbrellas. And so you might have leaves that are way down at the bottom getting completely shielded from that herbicide. You're gonna to need to come back and spray it again. It's gonna take a two or three times to actually get all that, all that uh, weed in contact with the herbicide. Here's an example where someone did some spraying already. You can see they sprayed kind of the edge of this kudzu patch and it killed it, but it didn't kill all of it. You know, this kudzu is gonna grow up over here. You can even see down in there, there's some green leaves that probably didn't get enough herbicide to be affected. 
this is gonna grow up and over this, and all this is really doing is chemical mowing, right? They're mowing it back, pushing the edge back so it looks better at the lawn, at the lawn level. This is gonna do, functionally, this will do nothing to this kudzu patch, right? It knocks it back for a couple weeks, it's gonna grow up and over this again. If you're gonna get rid of kudzu in a patch, you have to get rid of it 100% or it will just keep coming back every time. And right here, we've got three woody vines. This one, this one, and this one. And this is not gonna work for foliar herbicide application, right? There's no way to put foliar herbicide on this. So what we can do is use the cut stump method is what it's called. And what we do is we just cut this vine, we cut these here, and then we will squirt some herbicide right on here. Get it nice and wet, and then that chemical will soak in and kill the root at the tuber. Biocontrol is another way that we can manage kudzu. Now there's not a lot of great options for biocontrol, but there are these kudzu bugs. These were introduced to the US in about 2009, right around Atlanta. They probably got here by accident, but they do cause a significant reduction in biomass and growth and reproductivity of, of kudzu. They are not gonna kill kudzu, but they are one thing that we can use to sort of help us out. These little kudzu bugs are all over the place here. They're little tiny stink bugs and they will feed on the, the stems and the leaves and reduce the growth. In addition to the kudzu bugs, there are grazers that you can use. Kudzu was once used as a forage, try to feed cattle and sheep with it. Uh, again, it is related to the soybean family, so there's some properties there that, that ungulates like. Lately, in the last few years, people have been using goats to come into these hard to reach areas where it's close to water or really steep hills. It's tough to get in there and spray. It's tough to get a mower in there, but you can put some goats in here with some temporary fencing and they will really eat this stuff down to the ground. After a few years of that, the kudzu often dies. It can't re-sprout all the time. Uh, there's a limit to what it's capable of. So that is a pretty effective method that folks have been using. Another way to control kudzu is by mechanical management. And in this case, the mechanical thing they did was mowing. There's kudzu on this side, there's kudzu on this side. The only reason there's no kudzu right here in this middle strip is because they have taken a mower and they have gone through, the city has come through and mowed so they can reach some of their, uh, their equipment on the back end. Mowing is gonna keep kudzu down, but you can see it does re-sprout back. It's already coming back here, very low. It will always come back or keep growing in from the sides, but it's a good way to keep it down and keep it out of certain places. You just have to keep mowing repeatedly. If you have a small patch of kudzu, one way to get it out 100% is to dig up this tuber. We found one here, we're gonna cut these off, we're gonna pull some of these vines back, and we're gonna take a spade and actually dig this tuber up. So we excavate, you can see it's not always easy. You've got big roots going straight down, straight over. Cut some of these. You've still got this great big tap root here. Well, this one broke. If you have a small infestation or just a few plants, you can take the effort to dig these up and that will kill the kudzu plant. Kudzu can look intimidating. Grows fast, covers everything, there's vines everywhere, but don't let it scare you. There are ways you can manage this, there are ways you can control it, there are ways you can get rid of it. And once you do get rid of it, you're gonna see a boom of native vegetation, all sorts of native critters are gonna come back in there, and it will get rid of this desolate biological wasteland that is kudzu. And that is kudzu. If you enjoyed this video, check out our other videos on invasive plants. And if you wanna learn more about how you can use kudzu for different things, check out these videos Rob has done about different ways to use kudzu.